Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Christopher Gennari, and this is the Great Big History Podcast. Thank you for joining us. History 101, World Civ 1, from Lucy to Leonardo. In this episode, episode 4, Nomadic Government and Law. So what is our situation? When we left off, we have food scarcity. It's hard to find food. We have an ice age climate in the, Norm- in the Northern Hemisphere. We have an increase in wealth. Sheep, goats, horses, portable wealth. But we also have the trauma that is nomadic warfare. On the trauma on anyone who loses. And probably traumatic for those who have to fight it at all, even if you win. All of these things force an evolution of human society to evolve to become more organized. It can't just be 25 people walking around, doing things, voting with uh, finger snaps. It's got to be something more organized. And what we end up with is nomadic government. Come at me, bro. Nomadic government is personal, not organized. There's no constitution to it. There's no set of rules and institutions. There's no cabinet. There's no uh, different departments. There's no checks and balances. It's based on the person. Who is accessible? You you live in a tribe, a group of 25, in a tribe of 500. You know who they are. They know you. And what is your job? It is protection of the tribe. So who gets that job? And who does not get that job? Well, there's only a few people in any society who will get that job. They have to be born to the right people. They have to have the right charisma. They have to have personal and moral strength. People have to want to follow them. A call who cannot ride is no call. As Game of Thrones puts it, but if you watched Sons of Anarchy, you know a gang leader who cannot ride cannot be a gang leader. A motorcycle gang needs a motorcycler, motorcyclist to lead. You must lead by example. So whether it's Conan or Khal Drogo, these are not people who have it handed to them. They have the group, they have the group say you are, they they don't get it because they happen to be born of the right person, just the right person. They also have to be in the embodiment of these things that get people to follow them. They must have legitimacy in order just to be considered as a leader. Now, I'll have students who say, oh, nomads have no government. Of course they have a government. They have a leader. They have a group. They have a cabinet. They have a group of people who that leader defers to and asks to do stuff. Of course. They have a person who solves problems, who makes decisions. Which valley do we go into to look for food? Someone has to choose. You can't have democracy for that. Do we fight that other tribe or not? You can't have democracy over that. You have to have someone who in the end can embody the choice. And success or failure is in them. Success equals survival, which equals legitimacy. Call Drogo in Game of Thrones had the longest hair. Why? Because he had never lost a battle. That was his legitimacy. You saw in one set, his hair went down to his butt and you went, well, that guy is a bad mofo. Because he ain't never lost. Whether a a battle or an individual fight, he had never lost. He had never been humiliated. Well, you don't fight that guy. And you listen to that guy. So when that guy says, go over into that valley, see if there's food, you say, aye, Captain, and you go and do it. Failure equals death and destruction. If you lose, you are destroyed. Remember, nomadic warfare. All the men are dead. The women are kidnapped. The children are enslaved. So if you fail, you fail huge. There are no second chances in nomadic in nomadic societies. 
The one exception might be Genghis Khan. And it, it's inarguable whether it's a second chance or a defeat. It's He wasn't necessarily the leader of the tribe when he lost. He was just a regular dude at that time, as far as I understand. But that's an aside. That's a little aside. So what's the advantage of this? The advantage is you get good leaders. You get good leaders. Why do you get good leaders? Because otherwise the tribe gets destroyed. So you have to have good leaders. You cannot be a bad leader. There is no, well, let's try it out. Let's see. Like in America where we get bad presidents. We get a bad president. We go, well, he'll be gone in four years. We'll see what happens. Not in nomads. In nomads, if you are a bad leader, if you make a couple of bad decisions, the people immediately go, yeah, and you lose legitimacy. They murder you in your sleep and someone else takes over. So the advantage is you get good leaders. The disadvantage is turnover, constant change. People die all the time and leaders die a lot because they die in battle. They die on adventure. They die doing things or they turn out to be bad or they turn out to get, maybe they even get old. Maybe they're so successful they got old. Though that's probably unlikely. But the disadvantage is you never know what's happening next. There's no structure. It's personal. And so one leader might be really nice and really awesome and very good. And the next one might just be a pain in the butt. But you don't know. There's, and there's constant turnover. There's no stability in this system. Cabinet, the, 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 tr- the chief, because this is not a king, this is a chief. The chief's trusted people rise and fall, right? On their own failures and successes. So there's a constant turnover in this government. What about law? Societies have to have laws. So... How do these societies organize laws? Well, they're conservative societies. Why? Because they need to survive. So if it worked in the past, you keep doing it. They're not going to write these laws down. They have no written law code. They have traditions. But the idea is if it worked in the past, you do it because it worked. You survived. So the purpose of the law is to keep that society going, to keep it surviving, So who maintains the law? Old people. Old people, the oldest people, the patriarchs, the matriarchs, men and women, the old people. So in the video, I have a scene from The Godfather where the five families get together. They're all old men who are in charge and they're going to discuss, oh, we've had a war and we don't want to keep having the war and the young people are getting killed and we're old men and it's old men deciding the future of young people. I have another picture of the Cavan Older People's Council. Well, it's a bunch of old people making rules that young people are going to have to abide by. But why? Well, because they know the rules. They're old. They've lived under those rules. They can tell you why the rule is the way it is and why it works the way it works. So what are our results? What is the advantage of this? Is that you get consensus. Everyone agrees. What's the disadvantage? Is young people are locked out. Young people are being judged. And the chief is not part of this. Why? Because the chief is a young person. Who maintains the law is going to be an old person. It's going to be an old group. So what happens to young people? You get conformity. The idea that young people will start to behave like the old people or the way the old people want. And your punishment? Well, remember, you're all in the same tribe. You all know each other. You're all intermarried. You're all each other's cousins. So your punishment is to your reputation. So let me give you an example of how this works. I wake up one morning. And my my goat is missing. So what do I do? 
well, I go to the local yurt that has the alcohol. The one every everyone goes to. I go to the bar. And I walk in and I go to people and I go, my goat is missing. Did you see my goat? And the people will go, oh, no, no, no. But, oh, you know what? Bob was in here earlier. And Bob said he just found the goat. So what do I know? I know Bob took my goat. So now what do I do? I can go to Bob's yurt. Knock on the knock on the, the door. It's not really a door to a yurt. But knock and say, I want my goat back. What is he going to do? Now I'm confronting him. What is he going to do? He's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a goat. I found the goat. It's not your goat. Wh- whatever he's going to do, he's not going to want to get into a fight. He's going to lie and obfuscate. So I'm not going to approach him. That's not going to get me anywhere. You know? So what am I going to do? I'm going to hear, well, Bob just found a goat this morning. He was bragging about it all this morning. I'm going to go, I go to Grandpa. I go to Grandpa and I say, Bob stole my goat. Now, what does Grandpa do? Grandpa calls up Grandpa Bob, who he has known for how long? For their entire life, right? And they say, Grandpa Bob, we got a problem. We got to have a sit down. And Grandpa Bob says, fine, we'll have a sit down. Where are we meeting? Well, we'll meet in the back room of the bar because every bar is going to have a back room where the old people can get together. Where people can have a have a have a sit down. And so what's gonna happen? So you're gonna go in, the old guys are gonna go in, and who shows up? My grandpa, grandpa Bob shows up, but also all the other patriarchs and matriarchs, the men and the women, the oldest men and the women. Because this is the biggest thing that's happened in a while. They all want to be there. And so at one end of the table is my grandpa and grandpa Bob. And at the other end of the table are the other old folk who are just there to have a little chicken dinner. They're just there. They're going to have a little chicken parmesan. And they're not part of the conversation at the other end of the table. They're just here for lunch. And where are the young people? The young people are locked out. Young people are outside the room, and I'm staring at Bob going, you son of a... And Bob's like, I don't know. (laughs) I got a goat. And we have to wait. What's the chief doing? Wants nothing to do with this. The chief is off doing whatever chiefs do. He's like, you all handle it. It ain't my problem. Don't bring it to me. Because I'm a young man and I do war. I don't deal with goats. So the old folk are having their chicken parmesan. And my grandfather goes, all right, Grandpa Bob, you're going to pay. You're going to give back to goat. First of all, Bob is going to give back to goat. We all know Bob took the goat. And Grandpa Bob's going to go, why? How do you know he's he's a goat stealer? Well, you know, he is Bob the goat stealer. Well, that's just a nickname. But okay, fine. He took the goat. Right? And my grandpa's going to go, okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to give back the goat and we're going to cut off his hand. Now, what is Grandpa Bob going to do? Grandpa Bob is going to want to defend his grandson. He's an advocate for his grandson. So does he want his grandson to lose his hand? No. He's going to be like, whoa, that's crazy. You're going to lose your hand for a goat? That's insane. It's not like he stole a horse. Come on. And this is where the other old people come in. The other old people who are not part of this conversation are at the other end of the table eating their chicken parmesan. And they go, ooh. Ooh, this is, this is, I don't know, this is terrible chicken. Oh, I just can't, this so, it's chicken so hard. I can't, I don't even know if I could eat this chicken. Which tells what to my grandfather? It says the other people don't agree. It's way too harsh of a punishment. And so Grandpa Bob says, okay, okay, Grandpa. Okay, Grandpa Janary. How about a chicken? I'll give you back the goat and you get a chicken. And my grandpa goes, a goat for a chicken for a goat? Are you crazy? You stole, he snuck in, he stole the goat. That's crazy. And at the end of the day, right? 
And so Grandpa Bob knows chicken is way too low. And so what do they decide? They negotiate a little bit. And finally, it's two goats and two chickens. Whatever it is. It's a goat in the, it's an extra goat in the chicken. Right? And at the other end of the table, you're like, ooh, this chicken is so delicious. Oh, this is the greatest chicken ever. You guys should try this chicken parmesan. And what do they know? They know what the deal is. So now they're all going to sit there and eat and complain about young people, young people today, because that's what old people are going to do. Oh, you know, back in our day, we never stole goats. Of course they did. And then when they're done, they're going to open the door and there's going to be me and Bob and my grandfather's going to come up to me and say, you get two goats and two chickens. I'm like, I want his hand. He goes, shut up. You're going to get two goats and two chickens. You're going to be happy about it. I go, fine. And grandpa Bob says, you're going to give him a back to goat and you're going to give him another goat and you're going to give him two chickens. And Bob's going to be like, I didn't do anything. Shut up. Just do it. Okay, grandpa. And then we have to shake on it. And I'm going to squeeze his hand real hard. Right? And then it's over. I go back to my life. He goes back to his. He gives. I get the two goats. I get the two chickens. And it's over. If I shoot my arrow at Bob, I'm the bad guy on our next hunting expedition. And everyone turns and goes, hey, you got two goats. What are you doing? I'm mad. Oh, it's tough luck. And that's what the law is supposed to do. It settles these arguments. So the advantage is you get consensus. Everybody agrees on what the punishment should be. The disadvantage is the people who participated in the problem, who are hurt, are not always asked what they want, which is how our law works today. So the disadvantage is that the people who are hurt are not always consulted. You may not, I may not be happy with two goats. And two chickens. But I have to accept it. This is a way of bringing young people into conformity, as we said. And the punishment is mostly to his reputation. Which you may go, well, that sucks. But it's a real punishment. Remember, Bob has to live with these 25 to 500 people his entire life. And now he's Bob the Goat Stealer. We kind of already mentioned that. He's Bob the Goat Stealer. Ladies, let me ask you. Do you want to marry the goat stealer? Is that the man you want to marry? Do you want to marry the brave, the courageous, the generous, or the goat stealer? Right? So by ruining Bob's reputation, we ruin his entire future. Who he can marry? How high? Can he be a leader now? No. He can never be a leader. His kids can't be leaders. His kids have to marry down because they're going to be Joey, Son of a goat stealer. And you're like, Dad, what did you do? I'm sorry, son. Now the grandchildren will be rehabilitated, right? And you may go, well, they're grandson of a goat stealer. Yeah, but nobody remembers that. Remember, because people die of old age in their 30s. So no one, by the time the grandchildren are in their 20s, no one will remember who their grandfather was. There might be one or two old people who are like, I remember, right? And that's essentially it. I remember your grandfather was a goat stealer. And they're like, hey, nobody cares about that anymore, old man. Time has changed. And that's fair. And the old people will go, yeah, that's fair. You're not, you're not your grand grandfather and you're not your grandson. You're you're your own person. And so what is the result? Is we get sophisticated society first communities. These communities are dedicated to keeping the society going and to keeping peace within the society. Those with horses dominate the grasslands, dominate the plains. Those without horses get pushed into harder food zones, river valleys, mountains, forests. And it's going to stay that way until some unknown women in a river valley figure out that where they threw out or buried their seeds from the previous year, things were growing a year later. And there are people going to figure out, maybe we can make this work if we stayed. Instead of constantly moving for food, what if we stay and try to grow it? 
And that will be the start of settled societies in our next lecture. Thank you.